Looking toward Watoga from a nearby mountain range, we can see a building that is not like the others. One that defines Watoga's skyline. Welcome to AMS Corporate Headquarters. AMS stands for Atomic Mining Services. They were the self-proclaimed industry leader in alternative drilling operations throughout Appalachia. Their alternative drilling operations involved using nuclear explosives in order to mine areas deeper than traditional methods allowed. The headquarters lies in Watoga, but AMS's story starts, like many others, in the Charleston Herald building, where we can find a few questions to answer while we are at the headquarters from this short report on AMS's entrance into Appalachia. AMS Corporate Bully Atomic Mining Services is a relatively new company in Appalachia, but its practices should be familiar to anyone who knows a little West Virginian history. Reports of armed teams of security personnel used to disperse rioters and other protests have been an almost daily occurrence that this newspaper has reported on. We are sorry to say that a new low has been reached. When AMS first came to West Virginia, they were lauded as saviors to the region, bringing a new method of digging even deeper into the old mines. The fact that these methods included detonating atomic charges didn't faze the hardened mining communities who were used to the kind of risks common in coal country. But AMS abandoned the project almost as soon as they arrived, citing technical failures. Employment dried up again, and the area lurched even deeper into poverty. You would think that would be enough damage, but AMS wasn't done. Like thieves in the night, AMS suddenly swooped into the town of Welsh, claiming that they had the resource rights to the land, including the residences the people of Welsh were living on. Naturally, the town resisted this attempt to take away their homes, and that's when AMS's now infamous security personnel came in. Why does AMS want Welsh? AMS has provided no comment, and our reporters were escorted out of the town by armed men wearing AMS logos. This note lays down a few questions for us to answer while we are at the AMS headquarters. Why did AMS abandon their nuclear mining project? And why is AMS so interested in the small town of Welsh? Heading to the center of Watoga, standing at the base of this massive structure, we can enter a pair of doors into a lobby. There isn't much down here other than an elevator that heads up into the building. Let's enter. Popping out of the elevator into a mostly unlit upper lobby, we immediately see some sort of robotic structure made out of the leftovers of a Protectron. Heading to a recessed reception area, we can find the receptionist's level 1 locked terminal. Atomic Mining Services Here's the new spiel for anyone coming through looking for a tour. As always, do not mention Ultrasight or the town of Welsh. Atomic Mining Services is the industry leader in alternative drilling operations throughout Appalachia. By utilizing the power of controlled nuclear detonations, AMS is able to mine the rich resources of the area deeper underground than ever before. Our continued partnership with Robco and Hornwright Industrial have resulted in such exciting projects as Watoga, the city of the future, and the Hornwright Auto Miner, the future of automated mining. Pneumatic Elevator System Please reassure all guests that the pneumatic elevator system is completely safe. Yes, they may experience some slight discomfort and vertigo as the elevator runs through a particularly stubborn part of the tube, but insist that it all serves the purpose of getting them to their meeting that much faster. Michael Michael from Finance had another incident. I mean, hasn't he learned his lesson? It's like he's doing it on purpose. Oh. Do you think that's a possibility? We should let him go before this becomes a true liability. I'll have HR drop the termination papers. Better safe than sorry. So it sounds like they had an incident with this pneumatic elevator. At the end here, we have an option to play a holotape called Message from Hank Madigan. This is Hank Madigan. Message any fire breathers running through here after me. Had to dodge more robots and turrets than I can count, but I found what we're looking for. Atomic mining services were the barons of Ultrasight. Had a lab right here in this office. I think they might have found a way to help us out, even if they didn't know it. Turns out, once all the fuel is spent, there's a hunk of material left behind. 
This depleted ultracite doesn't play nice with the normal stuff. It turns corrosive. AMS was thinking disposal and containment. I'm thinking weapon. Scorched walk around with chunks of ultracite stuck in him. We modify some guns to fire depleted ultracite. See if that makes those assholes melt. Hank Madigan was a fire breather for the responders, and was one of the people who put together the technology in the prime ultracite receivers given to the player in the Into the Fire quest. He described using weaponized depleted ultracite to counter the scorched. We will be learning more about that reaction here later in the video. Moving back into the lobby, we see several of these pneumatic elevators we heard about on the terminal. They're numbered 1 through 8. Most are out of order, but tube 3 is operational, so let's head up. Entering the third floor, we immediately come across heavy robot and turret fire. After clearing out the copious amounts of turrets, we can find a holotape labeled Stuck, talking about another pneumatic elevator function. Stuck. Again. Garmin thinks I should document when this happens so we can sue the company. I don't know about all that. It's not really their fault, but there's not all that much to do while I'm in here, so here goes. It wasn't easy reaching the recorder, but I think I got it turned on. At least this time I'm in a section you can see from the hallway. So oh, I shouldn't have to wait long. But what luck? There's... Michael. Obviously, this isn't his first time being stuck. I wonder what's causing Michael specifically to get stuck, though. Just underneath the pneumatic elevator, we can find a disemboweled Yaogwai, a strange sight several stories up in this high-rise. In this area, we also encounter what I would describe as medium levels of radiation. Draped over a broken window, we can see some sort of lab tech, and inside the window, we can see what looks like the Yaogwai's enclosure. Heading inside, we can find another dead lab tech, and through this porthole, it looks like there may have been some sort of gas being pumped into this mutated bear's enclosure. This might be the source of the radiation. We are going to have to push further into the building to find out more. Heading down the hallway, we come across a room marked by radiation warnings. Heading in, we see some protection pods to our right, and to our left, we see another room marked again with radiation warnings. Heading in, we see a metal cage with a dead mole rat inside. Opposite of the cage, we can find a chunk of ultracite sitting next to a note labeled Subject 43. Subject 43, Naked Mole Rat. Exposure to heated ultracite, standard parameters. Observation, severe mutation consistent with advanced doses of radiation. Ultracite contains highly dense radioactive energy, even burning a small amount, releases enough to serve a variety of industrial applications, recommended green light to all proposed projects. So it sounds like they were heating up the ultracite, causing it to release large amounts of radiation, enough to severely mutate a naked mole rat. Inside another room, we find a hydraulic press terminal. Across from it, we see a porthole looking into a small room with a hydraulic press. We can see what looks like a lab technician with his arm stuck in the press. It looks like they were in the process of breaking up some ultracite into smaller pieces. Jumping on the press terminal, we can try to find out why this guy is stuck. The hydraulic press is absolutely capable of crushing anything you put in there. And while it may not seem like it is under tension when a sample is in the system, it can suddenly clamp down when the material's point of fatigue or fracture is reached. We have a few options here. Begin new test. 
It pulls up a bunch of errors. No surprise there, since it's been 25 years since anyone's touched this thing. We can continue heading up into the building. On a balcony looking over the third floor, we can enter a large office. On a wall next to some more doors, we can find an animal holding access terminal, locked with a level one lock. Live specimens may exhibit extreme aggression. Security systems will fire at any target. Do not assume immediate safety. Open containment door at own risk. 1029-2076, about two years before the bombs fell. Specimens in my clean lab, again. What the heck, I just cleaned up in here after last time. Is this because you got stuck dealing with the organic samples again? I get it, but you're killing my productivity over here. Looks like this terminal also unlocks this door. Inside we find several dead lab techs, one reaching for a security baton and the other reaching for a first aid kit. Next to them we can find a note. Subject 67. Subject 67. Cow. Exposure to heated ultrasite, double standard dosing. Observation. Growth of second head, no loss of function. Conclusion. Ultrasite exposure is still consistent with advanced radiation mutations. So this must have been how all the Brahmins showed up so quickly after the bombs fell in Appalachia. On top of that, it sounds like the radiation given off by Ultrasight would mutate any animal very quickly. Gotta wonder what they were planning on doing with this new power. Continuing upward, we come across a small room filled with desks and chairs. At the back of the small room, we can find a note labeled, Sue Them. You, put this recorder in your shirt pocket. It's small, no one will know it's there. I'm serious, Michael. It's not fair. They can't help it. You're just big boned. We'll see what they have to say after we sue them for workplace safety violations. And don't be your usual idiot self and take this note to work. Throw it away at home. Also, the fridge forgot to order milk again. Pick up some on your way home. I'll be home late again. Don't wait up. Looks like he did in fact bring this note to work. Whoops. I still kind of feel bad for this guy, but Michael was getting stuck more than other employees because he was big boned. He was planning on suing AMS. That must have been why he was recording last time he got stuck. Just below the top floor, we can find the facility terminal. Security installations. They've ordered more turrets. No, I'm not kidding. Get them installed and triple check the IFF. I don't want any more accidents while the boss is on the security bench. He might not like visitors, but I don't want any more dead bodies on my watch. Ah, so that's why we found so many turrets when we went up the pneumatic tube. Pneumatic elevator emergencies. Something needs to be done. This happens too often. Tried increasing the vacuum pressure, but we crank that too high. Well, it won't be pretty. Maybe this is an HR problem, not a technical one. We did hear earlier that HR was planning to fire Michael. They probably ended up going through with it, but who knows, that may have saved Michael's life in the end. Avoid the radiation labs. I don't want any work crews going near the radiation labs on the second floor. None. Let the robots do the cleanup. Trust me, you don't want to know why. Obviously because all the dead animals and heavy radiation down there. Finally reaching the upper level, we are forced to confront several more turrets. On this level we can find a door that leads to the CEO office. On a desk we can read his terminal. Partnership Report, Robco. Robco continues to be excited about Watoga. We're footing the bulk of the cost, but I'm recommending to the board that we continue to approve expenses no matter how high they get. Having the Robco name attached to us in any way has proved invaluable when dealing with the politicians. We're also seeing the benefits of having a high profile effort that deflects attention away from our other operations. We'll be covering partnership report Hornwright in my upcoming video, so we'll skip that one for now. Ultrasight R&D Report. Energy production from Ultrasight continues to exceed expectations. Depleted Ultrasight disposal continues to be a problem. Contact with non-depleted Ultrasight causes a corrosive reaction that melts both materials. Care has to be taken to contain all depleted Ultrasight material after use to avoid contamination. No explanation on why we failed to detect Ultrasight in mineshaft number 9. All previous measures ruled that site a failure. The sudden development of Ultrasight there continues to confound our previous assumptions. The the vein in number 9, extending bursting into the town of Welsh, has also had the unattended consequences of a more political nature. Our friends in the state capital are asking more questions at a time when we need to stay focused. Answers on how Ultrasight is created continues to be a top priority if we're ever going to take production to the national level. 
So it sounds like AMS doesn't even know fully how Ultraside is made. So that's why AMS was so interested in Welsh. Like I said, we'll be heading over to Welsh in another video, so make sure to stay tuned. Finally, heading to the top floor, we can see what looks like a meeting between the executives of AMS and the US military. Stacked on the table is a pile of Ultrasite and pre-war money. Who knows why the military wanted Ultrasite, but I'm sure it wasn't innocent. So that's the story of Atomic Mining Services, a very corporate company who discovered, mined, and tried to distribute Ultrasite. But presumably, when the robot takeover happened in Watoga a few days before the bombs fell, everyone in this building was killed by the security system. Alright guys, that's all I have on AMS. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you've made it this far in the video, consider joining my channel's membership. You get a cool little cryptid symbol next to your name when you comment, and it goes a long way in supporting my channel, so thank you. Also consider following me on Twitter. It's the best place for me to keep in contact with you guys. But anyway, this has been Widgeon TV. Thanks for watching, guys.